What's up guys, today we will be going over the loaded question which is the new pinnacle vanguard weapon in season 5 and I'll be talking about how to get it very quickly then also how good it is and comparing it to other guns in the game and overall just trying to see how good it is and how it matches up. So as auto loading holster then also reservoir burst. When the battery is full your next burst deals additional damage and causes enemies to explode on death. It comes with a fully upgraded stability masterwork. I also have major spec on mine then Here's the shader if you want to know the shader. So let's begin. Well, how do you get this gun quickly? Well, you need 500 fusion rifle kills, 1000 arc kills, then also 40 strike completions. So what I did was either use the raid fusion or the main ingredient, both are arc. Then I also used Thunderlord to help with the arc kills and also an arc subclass, Stormcaller on Warlock. And once you're done with the arc kills, you can go ahead and swap off the Thunderlord and put on 1000 voices if you have 1000 voices, because that will also help with the fusion rifle kills and it counts. But you want to be running the Lake of Shadow Strike on Earth because it is the fastest strike in the entire game, taking roughly like 3 to 4 minutes to complete. And by the time you get 40 completions, you'll be done with the kills. And if not, like once you get to like the upper 30s and completions, you can start taking your time and actually getting more kills. But that's the fastest way to do it overall. So let's start talking about the weapon. So the first shot does extra damage and causes like a dragonfly like explosion on death. And let me tell you something, this explosion is insane. It's actually crazy. So there's two things going on with the first bullet, extra damage, then the dragonfly on death. But these two things only work on the first shot of your mag and if the mag is full. So if you're below seven ammo, it will not work. So let's start breaking down in more detail some of these perks. First, looking at the extra damage on the first shot, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot off a shot and test without the perk proc how much damage I do on this ogre. And I hit 673 per burst and it hits 7 total bursts per shot. Now let's test with the perk actually active on the first shot of the mag. It now hits 896 per burst 7 times once again. So that's 4711 damage without the perk, 4272 with. And that means 33% more damage when this perk is proc'd. So let's go ahead and test the rate of fire of this weapon and find the damage per second number of this gun on this ogre. And for this number, I'm just going to use the first burst is the perk, then the last six are just regular. So in this scenario, you're going to be doing 34,500 damage total in your seven shots, meaning 3,743 damage per second, which is kind of low. But with this weapon, there's ways to get around the fact that only the first bullet is the extra damage, using something like Luna Faction Boots, which while in a rift reloads automatically for you, or something like Rally Barricade, allows you to have the reservoir burst on every single shot because it loads back up to the full mag every single time. So I can now hit the 896 per burst every single shot as long as I'm in a Luna Faction Rift or behind a Rally Barricade. So that actually ups the damage quite a bit. So let's now calculate the damage there. Now you'd be doing almost 44,000 total damage, which means 4,758 damage per second, which once again isn't too high. So let's compare it to a few other things. First, the Merciless. It hits 634 per burst seven times once again, which is 4,438 damage per shot. Now testing the rate of fire, and I already have the weapon fully spun up to show its max DPS, shooting off one entire mag. It takes 2.842 seconds, which means the damage per second of this weapon fully spun up is 10,931, which is much more than the loaded question. Now let's compare it to a shotgun, a 100 RPM shotgun. This is EP shotgun without trench barrel. I'm not going to use trench barrel in this video because it just got changed. I'm going to make a video about trench barrel later in the week. So just its base damage of 25-23, then testing the rate of fire, it took 2.208 seconds to shoot off 8 shots, meaning 9,141 damage per second without trench barrel at all. So loaded question is easily outclassed in terms of damage per second by multiple other energy weapons in the game. Still on the topic of damage, how much ammo does it hold? With no perks at all, it holds 16 base, then with one reserve perk, it now holds 19, so 3 more. Then with two reserve perks, one on the helmet, one on the class item, see how much it holds now. And it holds 22, which is quite a decent amount of ammo in a fusion rifle. Now let's talk about the other part of the reservoir burst perk, which is on death, they explode. So let's go ahead and see how good that is. So first thing I want to know is the explosion does a lot of damage, as you saw there, 6.5 thousand, which is way more than like a regular dragonfly perk or whatever. So if someone's in the radius of this explosion, it's going to die. Like, it's straight up dead. And it's easy, the best explosion type perk on death in the game, better than Firefly, better than Dragonfly. It might not be better than the Thunderlord one because it can chain, but it's very good. Now let's talk about auto loading holster, its final perk, where when you uh, swap to a different weapon, it reloads for you mainly. 
and it took 2.705 seconds for that perk to proc, which is actually pretty good because the base reload of this weapon, since it's a high impact fusion, is extremely slow, as you see right here. The base reload is actually slower than just letting it reload for you when you don't have it equipped. So it's definitely not a DPS monster, then what is it? Well, all the perks about this weapon, it being high impact, low rate of fire, the reservoir burst, the auto loading holster, all play into the fact that it's kind of like a weapon you want to pull out versus majors, high tier adds, or like a big group of low tier adds, and you know, shoot them, kill them, explode, all that good stuff, then put the gun away, let it reload for you, then the next time you encounter a major, a big group of adds, do the same thing, and it's not like a weapon they want you to be using at all times, it's more like a very situational gun you just pull out at the right scenario to use. And this sounded like a really good scenario for Gambit, because in Gambit there's a few high tier adds per wave, then there's blockers which are majors, and pulling this weapon out can easily one shot them, but one thing to keep in mind is you need a full mag to be able to use this perk, and in Gambit when you only start with 9, once you shoot 3 shots, you no longer have the perk because you only have 6 shots, even if you reload, that's not a full battery, so you would not have the perk. And once below 7 ammo, this is just a regular fusion rifle, that's all it is. So to really take advantage of this gun in Gambit, you kind of have to get lucky early on and get a special ammo box, that way you can take advantage of the main perk. And I think if you're the invader on the team where you're not doing boss damage necessarily, where you don't need like the EP shotgun, I think it could seriously work for that role on the team. But for the other three players on the team that, you know, try and melt the boss, just stick with EP shotgun. Real quick, I didn't even play PvP with this gun because unless you go around collecting ammo for like a minute, you're not going to have the perk anyway, so it's just a regular fusion in PvP for the most part. But let's talk about overall my opinion on the gun in PvE. So it's clearly not a great DPS weapon, but what it's trying to do, what its purpose is, I think it does it really well. If you need an energy weapon to clear majors, clear groups of adds, it can do that and it will do it actually pretty well. Then when you take advantage of the Luna Faction Rifts or the Rally Barricades, it can clear large groups of adds pretty well also, as you see in the Strike gameplay. The best way to explain this weapon is it's a legendary Telesto that only works on the first shot of the mag. One thing it does have over the Telesto is it does more damage on that first shot compared to a Telesto shot. But the Telesto can do the explosion on every single shot of its entire ammo reserves. So the question then becomes, do you value that extra damage on the shot more than having a weapon that just has the explosion on every single bullet without having to, you know, play into the gun super hard by using Luna Faction boots, dropping a rift for ad clear? And my answer is, I'm not sure. Like, the gun definitely feels good. But I think the Telesto can do the same thing that it can do without having to constantly make sure you're on the first shot of the round. Either through reloading, letting the auto-loading holster go, or Luna Faction Rift. But since the gun is a legendary, you can obviously use it while using 1000 Voices, or Thunderlord, or whatever, so that's definitely a plus for the gun. I think it would have been interesting to see if they gave this gun the Firefly effect on every shot, then the extra damage only on the first shot of the mag, and see how that would have been. So final conclusion, it's a very good ad clearing weapon. Its damage is kind of lacking, but that's kind of how all fusions are, except Merciless. And overall, I think it's a very solid weapon. Anyways, if you guys have this weapon, let me know what you think about it. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.